Hi, my name is Yu Chen Ding, and I'm a software engineer in Google. Today, we are excited to talk about on-device machine learning and share some of our newest updates. But what is on-device machine learning? Google offers a range of machine learning solutions to enable running TensorFlow models on your mobile phones, including Android and iOS, web, and even microcontrollers. Turnkey solutions are easy to use production ready APIs to tackle common machine learning tasks. You should start with turnkey solutions and see if they meet your needs. For more custom use cases, we help you to train and optimize your model, integrate it in your app, and deploy it in production. We offer easy to use production APIs through the MLKit SDK as turnkey solutions. MLKit offers a variety of vision and natural language APIs covering common cases such as barcode scanning and language identification. We are continually adding new APIs and updating our existing ones, so you can be assured that you will always have the latest and greatest features that Google has to offer. Let me go over a few recent updates in MLKit. You can recognize and extract tests from images using MLK's Text Recognition API. We added new language support for Chinese, Devanagari, Japanese, and Korean scripts. Text Recognition now also offers deep paragraphing support to group tests into meaningful blocks. We have also improved the quality of MLK's barcode scanning, including record, long tail latency, low quality image tolerance, and bounding box stability. The MLKit Post Detection API helps detect human posts in real time from a continuous video or a static image. We have updated the post detection model to support 3D points for depth analysis. To support language identification, we added an unbundled version backed by Google Play service on Android and reduced the impact on APK size by about 500 kilobytes. If you are developing mobile apps, I strongly recommend you to try out MLKit and add some cool machine learning features into your app. For users in need of custom solutions, we offer both pre-trained model and tools to train, optimize, and deploy your own model using TensorFlow Lite. Let me quickly introduce TensorFlow Lite. TensorFlow Lite is Google's machine learning framework for mobile devices and other edge devices such as browser, microcontroller, and it also runs on desktops. A lot of features of MLKit that I just mentioned are built on top of TensorFlow Lite. In the rest of the talk, we will share many recent improvements of TensorFlow Lite. The first thing I want to talk about is on-device training. TensorFlow Lite was originally designed for an on-device machine learning inference framework. I am proud to share our recent progress for the on-device training support. Now you can train your machine learning model on mobile and other edge devices using TensorFlow Lite. It enables important use cases like on-device personalization to customize models based on individual user needs without sending the data to the server. It is also an important foundation piece for advanced techniques like federated learning. To demonstrate the on-device training capability, we built an Android demo app for image classification. In the app, we can take pictures from four different categories, perform training, and use the app to classify camera inputs. Everything happens on device. Let me show you how it works. To use the demo app to train an image classifier on device, we recommend to take at least 10 photos for each of the four classes. In this demonstration, I want to build an image classifier for orange, plant, water bottle, and scissors. I'm taking a few photos on the orange with different angles using the triangle button for the first class. The same for the print with the circle button for the second class. Water bottle with the cross button for the third class. Scissors with the square button for the fourth class. 
After collecting the training data, I can tap the train button. You can see that loose is going down with the training process. After training is done, I can switch to the inference mode. If I point the camera to the orange, the model knows it's the first class by highlighting the first button. Print is the second class. Water bottle is the third class. And scissors is the fourth class. The demo app we built is pretty simple, but you can use your creativity to build other cool apps using the on device training feature. The demo app and its source code can be found on the TensorFlow Lite on device training page. To perform on device training, we need to execute different functionalities like training and inference. To achieve this, you can build a TensorFlow model with multiple TensorFlow functions. For example, in our demo app, we defined a train function that trains the model with training data, an infer function that invokes the model inference, save and restore function that saves and restores the trainable ways with the file system. After that, you can convert your TensorFlow model to TensorFlow Live format, integrate the model into your iOS and Android app, invoke the model training in the app, that's very similar to what you need to do with the model inference. You can also find the complete code app example in the TensorFlow Lite on device training page. In detail, the on device training is supported by implementing a bunch of low level features. For example, we supported variables to be able to store trainable weights. We supported multiple signatures to be able to run different functionalities like training and inference. We supported gradients for computing the backward pass and optimizers to update the weights. The nice thing is many of these features are used for outside of the on device training as well. You can now use variables for stateful inference or ship a model with multiple different functionalities with the multiple signature support. Currently, some of these features are achieved by reusing TensorFlow kernels with the Slack TensorFlow Apps feature. And we are working on supporting more features in TensorFlow Lite natively to deliver an even better performance and smaller binary size. Thank you, and I will hand over to Arun to talk about more exciting updates. Thank you, YC. Hi, everybody. My name is Arun Venkatesan, and I'm the product manager for the TensorFlow Lite and the TensorFlow Model Optimization Toolkit teams. We have made it easier for Android users to deploy TensorFlow Lite. To reduce Android app size and enable automatic future updates, we had announced at Google I.O. 21 that the TensorFlow Lite runtime is being added to Google Play services on Android devices. We are happy to share with you that a few Google apps and frameworks are already using this feature in production, while others are in the process of integrating with it. You can now sign up for the early access program to use this feature in your own Android apps. You will still continue to have the option to bundle TensorFlow Lite inside your app. Speaking of deployment, we had earlier announced support to run TensorFlow Lite models on the browser without having to further convert the model to another format. This enables code and model pipeline reuse and eliminates the need to maintain a separate JavaScript code base. We hope that you're already leveraging this feature. We recently extended support to also run quantized TensorFlow Lite models on the browser, resulting in improved latency and smaller model size. We will talk more about quantization in a later part of this presentation. Machine learning models running on device need to be highly performant in order to deliver a great user experience. We continue to offer the best out-of-the-box performance on CPUs, as well as peak performance using on-device accelerators. XNN Pack is a highly optimized library that enables faster CPU performance of TensorFlow Lite models via highly optimized implementation of floating point ops for ARM, WebAssembly, and x86 platforms. XNN Pack is now turned on by default, starting with TensorFlow version 2.7. XNN Pack also supports quantized TensorFlow Lite models resulting in an approximately 30% speed up on ARM64 mobile devices and a 5x speed up on x86 laptop and desktop systems for certain image models. 
Mobile and other edge devices have limited computational resources, memory, and storage. So it's important to keep your application resource efficient. You can optimize your TensorFlow Lite models to be smaller, run faster, and be more energy efficient using techniques and tools in the Model Optimization Toolkit. Pruning is one such technique. Pruning removes unnecessary connections between layers of a neural network to produce a sparse model. The pruning APIs have extensive functionality that provide you with tools for model manipulation. These enable control of multiple aspects of model pruning, such as how and when to prune, and also track the progress of pruning. A new extension to the pruning API now allows you to specify which parts of the model to apply the pruning policy to. Let's see this new feature in action. You heard about XNN Pack earlier in the presentation. The example here shows how to apply selective pruning to the parts of the model that can be accelerated using XNN Pack while leaving the rest of the model untouched. Such selective pruning allows an application to maintain model quality while targeting parts of the model that can be accelerated. Weights and activations occupy the majority of model size and are usually represented as 32-bit floating point numbers. Quantization is a technique to represent weights and activations as 8-bit integers or 16-bit floating point numbers to help reduce the model size with improved latency. However, due to the reduced precision, quantization can potentially result in an accuracy loss. We have released a new set of tools to help you easily debug the accuracy loss due to post-training quantization. The quantization debugger makes it possible to do quantization quality metric analysis of the existing model. The debugger logs differences between the float tensors and the quantized tensors for the same op location and emits metrics such as the mean square error between the float and the quantized results. You can easily identify the layers that have the largest error metrics by viewing the quantization debugger's output. Once you have identified the problematic layers, you can skip quantizing these layers using selective quantization, potentially resulting in a model with higher accuracy. In order to run a model on device, you first need to convert a TensorFlow model to the TensorFlow Lite flat buffer format. Further, to improve the peak performance of your models, TensorFlow Lite's delegates provides a convenient mechanism for hardware acceleration of TensorFlow Lite models on accelerators such as the GPU. In other words, not only do the ops in your TensorFlow model need to be compatible with TensorFlow Lite, but your model also needs to be compatible with the GPU delegate to be able to run on the GPU. TensorFlow Lite's target aware authoring tool makes it easy to detect not only TensorFlow model compatibility with TensorFlow Lite, but also tells you if your model is compatible with the GPU delegate. You just need to add a decorator to wrap your TF function model to detect compatibility. Surfacing both the model and accelerator compatibility at authoring time helps model developers avoid the extra work due to the conversion errors and also provides an opportunity earlier in the model development lifecycle to use GPU compatible ops in the model. We are now working on extending the target aware authoring tool to support other on device accelerators. You can also detect GPU compatibility post conversion of your TensorFlow model to TensorFlow Lite. Our new model analyzer tool dumps a helpful log of your model structure and highlights potential GPU incompatibilities. State-of-the-art models and reference app help you get started with TensorFlow Lite. We have new models and reference apps to share with you. We recently released the MoveNet model, a state-of-the-art post-estimation model that can detect 17 points. We also published reference apps for reinforcement learning and optical character recognition. As a recap, we learned about some of the new updates to our ready-to-use turnkey APIs in MLKit. We saw a demo of on-device training, talked about TensorFlow Lite in Google Play services for your Android apps, performance and optimization updates including techniques and tooling, compatibility tooling, and new state-of-the-art models and reference apps. You can learn more by visiting our website. Do keep in touch with us via GitHub and other public forums. Thank you for your time. <laughs>